Hi friends, please watch as we tour the site that makes clay and straw walls. So what we're doing here in the next month or so is we're building a big greenhouse. Oh. And the greenhouse will be all our coverage, but it will also let all the infrared of the sun in to help dry the panels and give a lot of ventilation and everything else. And eventually I want to get into growing plants because these produce a lot of moisture. Oh yeah. And I think the plants will benefit from that. Oh, for sure. So by having the two together, especially stuff drying, you're actually producing something all at the same time and making use of that space yeah, on yeah, different yeah. fronts. Mutually beneficial to each other. I think so. Yeah, that's I, a really cool I idea. I haven't played with it yet, but I'm thinking it has a lot to so, yeah, and feel free to take any photos you want. Yeah. We have lots of sprouting. Yeah. So these are the seeds inside the straw. Yeah, that's normal. Yeah. And they're starting, oh yeah, very normal. It's yeah. very good. Yeah, yeah. Because the roots are actually soaking up a lot of the moisture in the walls. Yeah. And once the, you know, these all turn brown and shrivel up, you know at that point, traditionally, that's how they knew that the wall would be fully dry and ready for finishing. Oh, yeah. So this did two, right? Yeah. And then two, when they shrivel up, they actually help with the plaster to tie it back into the wall. Yeah, they right. actually stick right into it. And they hold the clay in place too. A little bit, a little yeah. bit. The straw does a lot of that. Oh, yeah. But the, like the clay protects it, so it soaks up all the water. The straw holds everything in place as well as the wood. Mm -hmm. So otherwise, oh, the wood will stay in the wall. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is all the structure. Oh. This is just a regular two by four wall. Oh, okay. So, oh. and that's how we get through the structure part of it. Oh. Is that we're not relying on this for structure. Oh, okay. It is simply fill. Okay. And insulation. It's insulation, but more. What's it's the R value estimated? This is about one point five per inch. So it's not a huge R value, but the key is that it also has mass. Oh yeah. So the mass, if you open your windows in the summer, overnight, it keeps everything cool. Much cooler. Oh yeah. Like, I don't have insulation in our, or uh, air conditioning in our house, and it's perfectly fine because oh. of the mass. Oh yeah. It's like, think of a basement. Yeah, it's yeah. always going to be cooler than upstairs, yeah. even though there's no insulation. Yes, yes. In those walls. Yeah. So, with this, also in the winter, if you're using radiant heat, like from a fireplace or radiant floors, this stores that heat. It actually gets warmer and it also stores the heat from the sun. When the sun shines in, the walls will store a lot of that heat during the day yeah. and keep it warmer overnight. So yeah. it does it twofold. The, yeah. the mass actually does a lot for the comfort yeah, yeah. inside the building. Yeah. Now in the inside core, we have an exterior panel and an interior panel. So this is kind of the whole wall. And in the core, we put some fiberboard. It's uh, like a blanket on the middle. Okay. It helps us put formwork so when we move it into place, they go, go in very easy, but it also creates a nice little buffer or blanket in the middle of our wall system. Yes. Yeah, that right. tends to give us a continuous R value of about an R12 yeah. once we're done. Yeah. So the fiberboard is they come in four by eight sheets. They're quite strong, yeah. believe it or not, but it's uh, sawdust bound together with a food grade wax. Oh. So it's very permeable, very natural, very biodegradable. Okay. The whole key is that it still allows the wall to breathe mm -hmm. and it acts as that extra B cell formwork for when we move those panels into place. Okay. Oh, that's really cool. So one of these walls, you know, like the eight feet tall by four feet, one of these walls, just three and a half inches thick, has about 200 gallons of water when Ooh. we mix it oh, in there. Okay. Oh. So in one wall like this, you probably have with little square bales, probably about six square bales. You'll probably have about 12 bags, 50 pound bags of clay mm. and 200 gallons of water. Oh, wow. so that's a rough ratio. But because it has the 200 gallons of water applied to it, when it dries out, it recognizes that much water again because it's already done the work 
of drying itself once. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's like a living wall. So when moisture comes in there, yeah. it will recognize it, soak it up and dry out. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Because in reality, you'll never have 200 gallons of water fill oh, that wall no. again. Yeah, that's right. And that's, that's why right. they last so long. Oh, cool. That's that in cool. the lock of the vapor barrier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it breathes. Now, now, over time, is uh, fungi, fungi or a mold, does that take hold? No. Only if you were to have a flood mm -hmm. or a crazy amount of moisture into yeah. that wall. Okay. But again, 200 gallons of water is a lot. Yes. Yeah. You would need, like, and that's for one, right? So now we're talking 400 gallons of water. Yeah. And that's just a small little area of yeah. your house. Right, right. An entire house might be able to take on a, a couple lot. hundred thousand yeah. gallons of water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does the uh, quality or the type of straw vary? Or does it matter much? Yeah. That, good question. The bigger the stock, the better okay. for what we're doing. So when it fills more and it creates a bigger R value. So what is the best kind of straw you'd say? Wheat we or use wheat oats? a lot just because you can't find a lot of barley. Barley is probably the best. Okay. Wheat oh. is probably second on that. Okay. From what we found for having the big stocks. Oh, okay. Yeah. But uh, this is mostly wheat straw, only because it's more accessible. Mm. Okay. But I mean, the straw that goes in here, it's a lot of bales, yeah. but the cost of the straw, it, the, for example, you know, for Amanda and Claude's house, you know, it's probably, what is it, 28 by 40, yeah. two stories. You know, we're probably going to end up spending maybe fifteen hundred dollars on straw. Fifteen hundred dollars. Yeah, that's like it. Nothing. Wow. And, and that then fills two stories and all those double wall panels. Oh. So, like the amount of straw, it's a lot of it, but the cost is really low. Yes. yes. The cost of doing this is actually the labor. Labor. It's more yeah. labor intensive. It's than yeah. More yeah. labor intensive. What we do also with our buildings, like if we're doing the construction. We try to control all the material costs. So what we pay is what the client pays, yeah. and that tends to keep everything pretty level. Mm. So it's much cheaper to use this kind of materials Only than because maybe I make it that way. Like I, I want it to be competitive. Yeah. I want it to be competitive, oh. and I find like when we built our own house. The cost we were getting from general contractors, there was a lot of markups. Yes, and of course. I didn't understand where that was in relation to what we were attempting to build. Yeah. So, you know, it. Uh, I had to take that out yeah. of the equation a bit. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, because you need an architect to sign off on projects like this. That's yeah. right. We decided to get into the construction only because there's no one who understands enough about this. Yeah. So, and quality control is very critical. If this is done incorrectly and all of a sudden you put up a wet panel, and you plaster it, you're going to get you know, problems. Oh, yeah. Because it's still wet. Yeah, things might you start to fall off. You have to dry things properly, you have to understand the science behind it, and you have to listen to our ancestors who've been building this way for centuries. Because yeah. they would have known that. They would have had the patience to wait till it was dry. So that's why we build these off site, too, so that we don't cause delays in the construction process. I see you make bricks too. Yeah. I'd like to learn about that process. Uh, well, the bricks we're still making by hand, really. Yeah. Like, yeah. We make little form work kind of like this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we just form them like Adobe bricks. Yeah. Uh, we have used a machine yeah. for the bricks before, like a hand press. Yeah. Okay. But uh, that was one of our other partners who's no longer with us, so mm. they took their hand press away. Uh, it is something I would consider in the future because it is easier than trying to form it in a similar way. Yeah. But yeah, clay bricks I find wonderful for interior walls because uh -huh. they can soak in a lot of the heat that okay. comes in. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. Really cool. Yeah. And we do very natural plaster. So we do all the plastering ourselves only because there's no one else who understands natural clay yeah. and lime plasters. Yeah, yeah. Lime plasters date back 9,000 years. That's right. That's right. It's phenomenal. Yes. The yes. key to doing plasters or anything natural is that you have to be a little bit patient. Yes. You have to allow it to dry. Yes. So that's right. That's one process. The lime plaster, for example, it takes a full month to cure. Mm. But once it's cured, 
it does everything you would want it to do. So how thick a layer of lime plastic would you put apply? The first coat is clay and lime, yeah. so it's about a half inch, okay. a little thicker in parts, yeah. only because it has to fill some of the voids to make a nice even level. And then the last one's about, I'd say, a quarter inch to three eighths. And you're wetting in between layering, right? Yeah. Yeah. And the last coat, you actually have to soak down the wall like twice a day for at least one or two weeks. Okay. And then once a day for the following two weeks. Okay. To let it properly cure. Mm. Otherwise, it'll crack mm. because it needs more moisture in the air. And it gives it an organic look too, doesn't it? Like a, a, a yeah. It's yeah. beautiful. Like it's timeless, right? It, yeah. it looks really old, but looks really modern. Yeah, at the same yeah, time. yeah, yeah. And you can make it sculpt it to however you want. So yeah, if you yeah. want lines in it, you want some decorative aspects, you can do that. Yeah. But, you know, with that said, it does give you a really nice smooth finish. Yeah, yeah. And what kind of cover would you put on top of it? Or you let it breathe? Can you paint you can, it with a certain you, kind of you paint? You can paint it with uh, a mineral paint. Okay. The mineral paints date back a couple hundred years. So again, homemade. So, like a silicate based paint. Oh, okay. Yeah. There's a lot of companies that sell them. Okay. And that gives the outside a little bit of a protective layer. Traditionally, a third coat of plaster would have been used. Yeah. And that would have been the sacrificial color layer. And that would have had to be reapplied every 40, 50 years. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, several hundred years ago, Europe developed these mineral paints and they started painting the outside of their lime plaster. And that in itself started to allow for that sacrificial layer to be more easily applied. What's also nice with the paint is that it sinks in mm. and actually solidifies any loose parts yeah. of, the, of the, the lime plaster. Yeah. You'll see it used a lot on natural brick yeah. or stone facades yeah, yeah. where you're trying to strengthen some of the mortar oh. to give it a little more light. Oh, okay. Well, that's very valuable information. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Here's the process of making a wall. They already use a batch of uh, straw and clay that's been mixed. And then they pack it in to a wall and they put a form on it, move it along and pack it in. And eventually when it's complete, it's moved over and it's dried in the back as you saw earlier over there that stuff that's under the tarp is uh, walls that are drying out it's a lot of work but it's worth it ah the cows want to eat the straw we're gonna build <laughs> <laughs> We're building what's clay walls with these. Yeah, you gotta move along. This is Honey May. She's quite friendly. Oh, uh, okay. She's very curious. Not like yeah. getting friendly, but she always yeah, yeah, around. yeah. That's funny. <laughs> You're just gonna come back. Look, you gotta yeah. be on it. Yeah. <laughs> no, sorry. Maybe putting in here isn't gonna work. To chew on. Oh yeah. Just chewing gum for They're ready to uh, mix a batch of uh, straw and clay pretty soon. They've set up this big pouch at the end, and as you can see inside this tube, there's a bunch of uh, pins or rods that come through, and they help mix the batch. And they've already pre-mixed a batch of the clay and water in that container up there in the tower. So the process is going to start pretty soon. Here we go. They open up the valve, they let some of the mud through, and then they mix in the straw. Look at the other end where it comes out. Now a little bit comes out at first, usually is a little bit dry. Starting to come up now. Well, that's pretty good. 
good there. And it can be a little bit wetter than that, but you don't want it any drier. This works pretty well. Saves on labor. Better than mixing it by hand on a wheelbarrow, that's for sure. As long as you can keep the cows away from uh, eating it, you're okay. So they're gonna have uh, more than enough of that straw left with this batch that they're mixing to finish this wall and uh, work on another one. And this works out pretty well, it reduces labor. Now they're gonna fill that bag, and uh, I guess that bag's probably good for a wall. It's pretty labor intensive, but this works well. 